This vacation started on Tuesday, March 10th, 2020. I always used to start my vacations on a Saturday when I used to work for the post office as a letter carrier. And there are many things we've discovered. The highest form of life in the universe is man, and the lowest is a man who works for the post office. But now that I'm retired, I can leave any damn time that I feel like. And since last Saturday, the weather was forecast was for rain, Tuesday was just as good as any day to leave. The first day was a three and a half hour drive from Glendale to Blythe, California. The next day it was a 166 mile drive from Blythe to the city of Mesa, Arizona. Somehow, even without seeing a sign, I knew we had passed from California into Arizona. Our drive that day would take us from Blythe, California, on the border, to Mesa, Arizona. Not too far across the border, we stopped off at the little town of Quartzsite. You'll find out that the price of gasoline is about a buck cheaper in Arizona than it is in California. At Quartzsite, you can find the monument to High Jolly. It is where Haji Ali, better known as High Jolly, is buried. High Jolly is one of the first riders in the Experimental Army Camel Corps. Also found at Court Site is another sort of monument to High Jolly, a statue of a camel made almost entirely of auto wheel rims. For the most part, the traffic was light driving on the Arizona freeway. Here's a shot of some of the traffic. But the closer we got to Phoenix, the heavier the traffic got. And it wasn't long before we were in a traffic jam. Finally, we entered the city of Mesa, a suburb of Phoenix. Here's a picture of the Mesa city flag. I just thought it was kind of cool looking. While I'm at it, here's a picture of the Arizona state flag, and here's a picture of their state motto. Just kidding. Like I said, we were heading back to Mesa, Arizona. That's where my father lives. Dad is 93 years old and going strong. We were in Arizona to do some sightseeing, but while we were in Mesa with my father, our main objective was to get out and eat. And that's exactly what we did. The whole time we had been in Mesa, the weather had been gloomy and rainy. But on our last night there, a beautiful rainbow appeared in the sky. Kind of like a sign that things were going to get better. And sure enough, the next morning we woke up to a beautiful, sunny day. We started off the morning with some breakfast at the Red Mountain Cafe in Mesa. Here's a picture of me and Marion at the Red Mountain Cafe. And here's my delicious biscuits and gravy. After that, we said goodbye to my father and headed off on the road. We were heading south of the I-10 to Tucson, but on the way we'd stop off at Casa Grande. There we made a slight detour to see the Casa Grande Neon Sign Park. It's a small spot, maybe 12 neon signs that have been lovingly restored. It was nice, but I'm betting it's a whole lot better at night when they're lit up. But we didn't have time to wait until evening. So we got back on the road and headed to Tucson and Mission San Javier. Here's a picture of the mission. Originally founded in 1692, this building was constructed between 1783 and 1797, making it the oldest European structure in Arizona. Here's a picture of Marion at the mission. It's a well-known pilgrimage site with thousands visiting each year. Unfortunately, we couldn't get inside the mission because we were told they were performing baptisms at that time. On the other hand, maybe I wasn't allowed in for reasons I just didn't understand. Actually, I'm a pretty good guy. I think I'm just misunderstood. Here, listen to what these people have to say about me. He's a fucking thief. He's a fucking liability. You know what? You're an asshole. 
Yeah, but what about that time I rescued that old lady and her 12 cats from that burning house? Whatever. Ah, oh, forget it. By then we were hungry, so we stopped off at BK Carne Asada and Hot Dogs to get ourselves a Sonoran hot dog. And what is a Sonoran hot dog, you might ask? The Sonoran hot dog is a style of hot dog popular in Tucson, Phoenix, and elsewhere in southern Arizona. It consists of a hot dog wrapped in bacon, grilled, and topped with pinto beans, onions, tomatoes, mustard, mayonnaise, and jalapeno salsa. Just outside the entrance to BK's, they had a giant replica of a Sonoran hot dog. Here's a picture of me by that giant hot dog, trying to control my appetite. Inside the restaurant was this great sign. Here's a shot of my Sonoran hot dog, and let me tell you, it was delicious. Hell, it had me speaking Spanish. Muy bueno. Here's a picture of me just about ready to make a mess out of that Sonoran hot dog. Here's a picture of Mary acting like she doesn't know who I am. <laughs> As we headed down the road, we passed this 30 foot tall neon cactus. On one side it says Tucson. On this side it reads Miracle Mile. The road here was the first divided highway in Arizona and was called the Miracle Mile of Safety when it opened in 1937. A little farther, we came across this giant muffler man on North Stone Avenue. You can find muffler men all across the United States. Someone had given this one a big axe to hold, transforming him into Paul Bunyan. I'm a lumberjack and I'm okay. I sleep all night and I work all day. Finally, we made it to our prime destination for the day, Saguaro National Park. Saguaro National Park is divided into two sections. The western part, which has a higher density of saguaros, and the eastern part, which is quite a bit larger and has more hiking miles to it. We decided to concentrate on the western part. Here's a map of Saguaro National Park West. Once you cross the entrance to the park, you start seeing the saguaros everywhere. In fact, they were popping up even before crossing the entrance. Seeing all those cactus on the side of the road made you feel like you've been transported back to the old wild west. Yeehaw! The saguaro cactus can often grow up to 40 feet in height, but some grow even taller. The tallest saguaro ever measured was near Cave Creek, Arizona. It was 78 feet tall. Unfortunately, it was knocked over in a windstorm in 1986. The average lifespan of a saguaro cactus is 150 to 200 years old. Here's a picture of me amongst some saguaro. We stopped off at the modern looking visitor center to take a look around. They had said that the western part of the park had the highest density of saguaro cactus. And by looking at this shot from the visitor center, I guess they were right. Looking at this saguaro, I think these cactus should all come with some sort of warning label attached to them. Next up, we drove over to Hohokam Road. Here we are on Hohokam Road. It's a six mile gravel, dirt, loop road that I found was pretty easy to drive. But I have to admit that some parts of it were a little bumpy. Uh... Drive just a little ways down the road and you'll come across the Valley View Overlook Trail. I highly recommend it. Just under a mile out and back, it brings you into a forest of saguaros. Did you know that a saguaro cactus doesn't start to grow its arms until it's at least 90 to 100 years old? After that, the arms begin to grow more frequently. Here's a picture of me and Marion trapped in the arms of a giant saguaro. A couple of hikers ahead of us on the trail. Did you know that there are male and female saguaro cactus? How do you tell the difference, you ask? Well, here's a picture of a female saguaro. Your 
Eh, what the hell? I'm just kidding. Well, we finished up our hike and started back on the road, heading back to town. Here's a shot of that road, Hohokam Road, just to give you an idea of what it looked like. We ended up at a nice little place called Grumpy's Grill. Here's Marion at Grumpy's Grill. Here I am, no grumpiness here. This is a picture of our sandwich and onion rings that we had. <laughs> After dinner, we headed back to the Saguaro National Park to take a look at the cactus in the setting sun. There's a few more cars entering the park, and that's where we'll be heading out in a few minutes. It'll be a long day, and tomorrow will be just as long. It was time for a good night's sleep.